Hey everybody, Greg here at Video Maker here with keyboard shortcut tips for Premiere Pro that you just can't live without. So these are gonna help you navigate around the timeline, uh, make sure your work gets saved properly, um, and just a few other quick tips to really help speed up that workflow for your editing process. So let's dive right in. The first ones I wanna show you is Control S. So this is going to save your project. So if I click in here and I Control S, it's gonna save. Now, you can set Premiere to auto save and that works great, um, but I just found that, you know, hitting Control S occasionally and I started to do it without even thinking about it. Like I couldn't even tell you how many times I hit Control S during a given editing session, but it's a lot. So this is just gonna make sure you don't lose any work. So that's probably one of the first and foremost ones that is most important. Now let's talk about some ways to move around the timeline. So this red guy here is our current time indicator. And if I use the up and down arrows, now I know that in Premiere Pro CS5 and earlier, I believe the page up and page down buttons do this, um, but it's actually a handy switch for CS6 because, and I'll tell you why. First of all, let's show what they do. The up arrow is gonna move toward the beginning of your timeline, and it's gonna move between edit points. The down arrow is gonna do the same thing and move further down your timeline. So notice as I hit the down arrow, it's basically moving the CTI to that next edit point. Okay, so and I can you know hit it fast or slow. Um, one thing that's important to know with Premiere is if I deselect a couple of these layers, now when I use the up and down arrow on its own, it will actually skip past those when it's moving between edit points. So, you know, there are some reasons that you can use this, but I find more often than not that this just catches me by surprise and it's annoying me. But that is why if you hold the shift key, it will basically ignore whether those uh, layers, those video or audio layers are highlighted, and then it will move between edit points regardless of if the layer is highlighted. So holding shift basically um, is a solution there. So, um, okay, now the next Next one that I like to use as a companion to that one is the left and right arrow. So if you move the using the left arrow, it will move one frame at a time toward the beginning of your timeline. And if you hold it down, it will essentially play more or less real time. It might be a little choppy, but um, basically that's the idea. And then of course the right arrow will move you forward one frame at a time and holding it down will move you closer to real time. So basically a combination of the up arrow, the down arrow, the left and the right really allows you to move quickly through your timeline. It allows you to be real precise. And another addition there is at least on the 24P timeline, if you hold shift and use the left or right arrow, it will actually move you five frames at a time. So if one frame isn't quite fast enough, just hold down that shift button and you can really dial it in. So if we were trying to find the exact spot where the board leaves the ground, you know, we can go frame at a time. If we're trying to find, you know, the end of this little clip, we can hold down shift and then go right to where he lands, that kind of thing. Okay. The next thing I wanted to show you is how to set your work area bar. So the work area bar is useful for a couple reasons. One, it can help you preview a specific region of your uh, timeline, or it can also help you export a specific region of your timeline. So if I hit Alt and the left bracket, it will basically set the start point for my work area bar. And you can see that right here. Now you can reach in there with your mouse and grab and drag it, um, but Typically, you know the exact start and end point. So let's say this is my exact start point. I'll use my down arrows with the shift key. And let's say I just wanted to go to this point right here. I'm gonna do an alt right bracket. And basically now this work area bar, if I hit the enter key, it will play back that portion of my timeline. And if I hit enter key again, it'll just start it right at the beginning, which is really handy. And then if I go to the export menu, uh, export only the work area bars and options. So it's great for exporting just specific little clips. Okay, so the next one I wanna go over is using a default transitions with a keyboard shortcut. So the way this works is if I were to uh, go to the beginning of one of my clips, so I'm gonna use the down arrow to do that. Now, if I hit Control D, it's going to apply my default transition. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here, okay? So right now my default transition is dipped to black. But notice that it didn't apply it to this clip and that is because it is not highlighted. So now if I were to hit Control D again, it will apply it. And of course, with a dip to black, 
If I were to delete these two, bring them down onto the same timeline and hit Control D, it's gonna apply it right between them. And that gives me a nice little dip to black between clips. So um, it is important to note that you can select your default transition. So let's go up here to the effects window, video transitions, and you can see right there, it's got the yellow box around it, which means that's my default transition. Now, normally, actually my default transition would be here. So cross dissolve, I'm gonna right click it and say set as selected default transition. So now if I move this clip back up and I hit control D, it's gonna basically apply a fade down and a fade up. Now, of course, in this case, this isn't gonna give us a different result than the fade to black, but in many cases it would if you had overlapping clips. So, okay, now the a modified version of that default video transition is the default audio transition. So I'm gonna hit the up key and let's just go ahead and delete these transitions so we can see where we're at and make sure that these are all highlighted. So I'm gonna highlight audio two. So if I twirl down here and say audio transitions, so right now constant power is my um, audio transition default, then that's fine. So rather than just hitting control D, I'm gonna hit control shift D. And you can see what that did. It put a fade down right there and a fade up right there. So it's a very quick way to move a along your timeline and put these default transitions in. So pick the ones that you use the most, set them as your default, control D and control shift D. So the final uh, shortcut I wanna show you here is the plus and minus key. And what that's gonna do is zoom in and out of your timeline. So if I hit the minus key, it's gonna zoom out and show me more of my timeline. If I hit the plus key, it's gonna take the center here and zoom in on that section of the timeline. Minus to zoom out, plus to zoom in. Now I use this about 34 billion times per edit session. Uh, might be a slight exaggeration, but really I use this a lot because you know there's times where you really wanna get in here and you know drag something one frame at a time. Um, and then there's other times where you really wanna see the overall and you wanna drag stuff out you know a lot, uh, a lot faster. So the plus key to go in, the minus key to go out. And there you have it. Those are just real simple keyboard shortcuts that you're gonna use all the time. You know, these aren't ones that I break out every once in a while. These are ones I'm using all the time, you know, every minute that I'm editing. So hopefully this is helpful. And if you wanna know more about how to speed up your editing process, you can read a great article called Double Your Editing Speed, and you can do that by clicking on the link. With that, I'm Greg Olson with Video Maker. We'll see you next time.